so today uh, we will be uh, focusing on uh, a few things about uh, CIP then the main focus of this uh, presentation is secure boot and software update activities in CIP and there have been some updates related to IEC 6240 certification activities and we are uh, uh, doing multiple activities uh, in that direction and uh, then we will see some other details related to IEC and then uh, we'll have q &A session. So uh, briefly about uh, CIP. So the main motivation behind CIP is to basically collaborate with the other open source projects and working with other uh, stream projects to help each other and reuse the effort which is uh, been contributed uh, in different uh, open source communities. So as part of this, uh, CIP contributes in multiple other open source projects such as uh, reproducible builds, IP boot card, and many others. And that way, we uh, continuously contribute and collaborate with uh, multiple open source communities. So basically, CIP uh, was started to solve some of the key issues in industries which are common uh, and most of the players face uh, and they try to solve similar kind of issues. So uh, to solve especially like uh, having industrial grade softwares with long term support and uh, industrial grade security uh, and reuse the open source components. So these were the uh, key issues where uh, CIP was uh, started by multiple uh, industry players. So we'll see some more details about that. In CIP, uh, basically we have an open source base layer uh, which comprises of CIP core packages and uh, CIP kernel. So as part of uh, CIP main development, uh, we focus on continuously uh, for long term maintaining CIP kernel and CIP core packages. So uh, currently the latest kernel CIP has uh, supported for uh, super long term support is uh, 5.10 kernel. And as part of uh, IEC certification activities, we are focusing to strengthen this OSBL layer. And uh, here, as part of uh, IEC certification activities, uh, CIP kernel uh, needs some additional uh, things to meet IEC requirements. And same is the case with uh, CIP core packages. So we'll see further details about that. So as uh, CIP platform, uh, basically, uh, we built and maintained pre-production base layers, OSBL, and then uh, members from CIP and other community members can reuse that, and they can make uh, post customizations and they can contribute back. CIP also maintains its own version of a real-time kernel, and it's continuously upgraded uh, to latest patches, which is maintained by dedicated CIP kernel maintainers, and it's supported by Linux uh, kernel developers. Uh, so regularly, uh, CAP kernel maintainers keep uh, collaborating with the kernel developers. And there are uh, multiple uh, reference hardware supported by CAP, and there is a certain process to select uh, reference hardware, hardware in CAP. And then on those reference hardwares, uh, all the tests, which includes CAP kernel test as well as CAP core test, they are uh, uh, continuously executed, and some of the Collaboration is also started with kernel CI, where test gels are published. And uh, one of the important focus area for CIP is to have a super long term support for up to 10 plus years. Then in CIP is uh, supported by uh, multiple work groups. So in CIP, mainly we have a uh, CIP kernel work group, a uh, testing work group. CAP core work group and uh, CAP security work group as well as uh, CAP software update work group. So we are basically from security work group and our uh, current focus is uh, to get CAP certified for IEC 62240, 4-1 and 4-2. Uh, the main work in uh, CAP core uh, basically is to maintain a ref a reference image and uh, the main topic of today's presentation, which is secure boot support and software update support, is primarily uh, comes from CIP core work group as well as CIP uh, kernel work group. So uh, 
from CIP uh, security workgroup side, we are basically collaborating with all the workgroup members for meeting IEC requirements as well as adding additional uh, features to include additional packages as well as additional uh, kernel configurations to meet IEC requirements. So uh, different workgroups have different uh, meetings and they keep regularly communicating. Uh, some workgroups have uh, bi-weekly meetings, some have uh, weekly meetings. And that way, there is a strong collaboration among all the work groups to share things and to discuss the roadmap and all those things. So uh, uh, in this presentation, we are not talking about much details of other work groups uh, because uh, we want to more focus on uh, secure boot and software update support. So for CAP uh, security work group, uh, one of the key goals is uh, related to IC certification and uh, uh, basically identifying the required additional packages to add in CIP core layer as well as identifying additional kernel configs to add and uh, collaborating with uh, other workgroup members and uh, certification body. Uh, apart from that, we also investigate other security standards to find out what additional security things can be added in CIP. Uh, like NIST uh, standards and uh, hardening practices. So for that also, we, uh, we have done recently some work. And uh, we are also planning to start some collaboration with OpenSSF, uh, which has got a lot of good stuff in security, which will, which will be quite useful uh, for CIP to also apply in uh, uh, CIP layers. So, uh, Next is the support of secure boot and uh, software update. So basically this requirement comes from IEC and uh, it's not uh, just IEC requirements, but uh, it's one of the key requirements for any uh, system to have uh, security in place. So from IEC perspective, there are key requirements such as uh, maintaining the integrity of the boot process to ensure that integrity of the firmware software and configuration data is maintained and it is verified when the system is booted and uh, apart from that the authenticity of the boot process the product suppliers roots of trust is maintained and it is verified at every boot so these are the key requirements of IEC to address these requirements in CIP uh, since quite some time CIP uh, kernel maintainers as well as CIP core members are working to uh, to make this support available. And uh, for AMD64 and for ARM64, uh, we have already supported this, and still there is some work going on. So more details uh, will be there in coming slides about that. And similarly, from IEC perspective, there is also a requirement of uh, having secure software updates, where uh, the software updates should be supported through uh, signed images as well as encrypted images. So that support have been already enabled and it's uh, in place in ESR CIP core project. So the details can be found in GitLab projects. Uh, there is a reference for that. So next, uh, Venkat will be explaining about more details and support of secure boot and software updates. Uh, Venkat, uh, over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dinesh. Uh, it's me again, Venkat. Uh, so I will be talking about on secure boot and uh, software update uh, from the perspective of uh, security uh, uh, group. So how it is implemented in uh, CAP platform. So here uh, I'm, I'm not a hacker or I'm not a uh, ethical or non-ethical hacker or I'm not a security expert. So I'm just want to talk about uh, my learning about secure, uh, how security we can implement in some of the, uh, uh, yeah, uh, some of the platforms. So, uh, going to the next slide. Uh, so, what is secure boot? Uh, so, maybe uh, I've taken some of the definitions from the uh, Google. So, it's a uh, standard uh, uh, developed for uh, PC industry. Uh, to make sure uh, the device boot uh, using a trusted software. 
uh, yeah uh, and uh, also it says uh, it should detect uh, any tampering if in uh, in the system uh, in the boot stages so it has to be uh, eradicated so there's another definition yeah so another uh, says secu uh, UV secure boot yeah it's a verification mechanism that ensures the code launched by the computer is uh, firmware is trusted yeah so this is the uh, secure boot and why uh, this secure boot is uh, important now uh, because uh, nowadays the hackers are uh, are sending some uh, fake so uh, uh, security patches and sitting in the system and uh, uh, in the boot stages and uh, they're getting uh, access to the systems and uh, doing vulnerable vulnerability act attacks sorry uh, so basically we need to resist these attacks or infections from these malicious softwares and yeah get the uh, uh, our customers uh, trust uh, uh, of course and uh, yeah it's one of the requirement in IC standard so uh, that's why we are talking about today uh, going to next yeah uh, yeah this is a uh, uh, secure boot uh, 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 or a boot stages um, any uh, embedded uh, platforms so uh, in CIP uh, it uses UFI based secure boot uh, so uh, and uh, every stage in this boot sequence should be validated um, uh, in CIP currently uh, we verified on uh, chemo target uh, and on real hardware is still work in progress uh, we have to finalize the hardware first and then it because it requires uh, uh, secure storage and needs some dependencies so it's still in work in progress yeah uh, in the coming slides i'm going to explain about each stage of the boot sequence and uh, i'll explain how it is uh, verified yeah uh, uh, in the first phase uh, we should have a uh, secure boot keys so uh, it is uh, uh, defined by UFI uh, specification uh, how a secure boot uh, should process uh, with various uh, uh, secure boot keys so there are uh, these are different keys uh, used in for uh, 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 getting validated or, or uh, uh, the, the complete secure boot process uh, 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 is uh, 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 validated using these keys so I go by one by one is uh, the first one is a platform key uh, which is the main key uh, which is uh, I think uh, it will be uh, fused in hardware or the uh, platform owner as uh, uh, gives this key and he um, and it builds the trust between the platform owner and the uh, the hardware the firmware uh, the next is a, a CAC is a key exchange keys so basically this is to uh, validate the uh, uh, the, uh, the next uh, DB and DBX uh, uh, databases or uh, those uh, those contain actual certificates uh, which is used for uh, signing the binaries or metadata so uh, to update any of these databases, so a key exchange key uh, should be verified. Either platform key or okay, anything you can use. Yeah. So that uh, is many purposes to validate the DB and DBX. Uh, so uh, DB and the DBX contains the list of certificates that uh, uh, DB contains the uh, uh, white listed certificates or the accepted certificates, uh, which uh, which needs to be uh, verified against the of uh, the entities uh, which are signed, and the index contains the blacklist.
certificates or the malicious certificates uh, 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 which will uh, uh, yeah. the firmware or the UV firmware will try to stop the uh, fine release of sign with uh, these certificates present during GBX. So uh, this is about the Once, uh, if, if, if and, and follows the steps, those keys will be embedded into the uh, the uh, VMF WASP file, and that will be uh, eventually used in secure boot process. Uh, so uh, the another uh, method is uh, uh, snake oil keys. In this method, uh, uh, we no need to generate the uh, PK CAC. Uh, uh, or, or self-signed keys not required. It, it is used the Debian uh, uh, pre-generated keys. Uh, uh, so you can install OVMF package, uh, which which will ships uh, these files in user share folder, user share OVMF uh, folder. You can see the uh, the VARS file, which has embed with the uh, snake oil keys. Which also have, uh, um, which is having already PK and CAC all uh, certificates. Uh, so, so next uh, is about the the firmware. Uh, so uh, we have talked about the secure boot keys, uh, and now uh, we are ready with the keys. Uh, now uh, the firmware. Uh, 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 in uh, so we need to choose a UFE based firmware because we are uh, implementing UFE secure UFE based secure boot. So it needs uh, UFE based implementation. Uh, that is the reason we have chosen OVMF, which is based on uh, UFE. Uh, it is uh, 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 reference implementation from EDK2. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, uh, this is the firmware. Uh, you can also get it in uh, in OVMF package. Uh, so when you install, you will find it in under this folder: user share OVMF and OVMF code file. So uh, this is we used for x86 or MD64 platform. Uh, 
and in whereas in ARM architecture we have some issues with uh, OBJ copy and this IVMF, AAVMF, sorry. So uh, that's why we have alternatively used U-Boot uh, uh, with UFI as a firmware uh, for ARM architectures. Uh, uh, it's for QMU, of course. Uh, so we need to enable uh, these two configs in U-Boot to make U-Boot as uh, 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 enabled with UFI and secure boot. Uh, uh, so we are uh, in U-Boot, we are, uh, uh, or uh, the CAP is uh, embedding the secure boot, co uh, boot keys inside the U-Boot uh, statically. So that is why uh, the uh, config FA variables pressed is there. And um, so, uh, uh, once the uh, yeah, firmware is, uh, firmware is uh, there, uh, is ready, and, and now it's a bootloader uh, which needs to be uh, verified by firmware, of course. So we, uh, uh, or, or CIP, uh, uses EFI boot guard. Um, uh, it's, it is not mandatory, uh, you can use any bootloader. But EFI boot guard, we, uh, it is used in CAP for, uh, uh, for other purpose as well. Uh, uh, in software update, it needs uh, uh, some functionality, watchdog related functionality. So uh, it has chosen EFI boot guard. Or you can choose uh, U-boot as well. Uh, so uh, any bootloader should be signed with now uh, with secure boot keys that are generated in the, uh, in the previous slides. Uh, so, uh, in the previous slides, you, you will maybe getting the uh, the keys. So you can use the SB sign tool to uh, uh, sign the bootloader. Uh, you need the SB sign tool package to uh, get this tool. Um, yeah. uh, uh, that's the boot run. And next is the uh, uh, unified kernel image. So in the boot process, uh, uh, after boot loader, uh, is general uh, uh, pro uh, usual uh, ways to load the kernel and then in interMFS. Uh, but uh, here we have used uh, unified kernel uh, because uh, 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 for assigning uh, multiple uh, artifacts like uh, kernel, any TRMFS, and uh, command line is quite complex. So uh, unified kernel helps you uh, combine all these uh, artifacts into a single uh, image, and you can sign that image uh, with, uh, uh, yeah, with OBG copy, and sorry, uh, you can club them using your OBG copy, or uh, using, uh, 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 there's a tool from EFI boot guard that is BG Gen Unified Kernel. Uh, uh, so CAP is using this to, uh, yeah, same reason that we, we need it for other purpose of software update. So, yeah, you can use OBG copy as well to uh, club uh, or to create the unified kernel image. Uh, so that is a command uh, for the BG, uh, BG generate unified kernel image to generate unified kernel and then uh, sign the unified kernel with the same command as explained in the previous slide. Uh, so this, uh, uh, yeah, this creates unified kernel and signs the, this image. Uh, the finally is uh, uh, the root of S. So uh, root of S uh, uses uh, 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 DM variety uh, device or it's a uh, read-only root of s uh, uh, it is used to um, uh, uh, so dmvt will uh, uh, create the uh, uh, the hash values of each node and creates a hash of it basically to verify the integrity of this and uh, 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 yeah and also signs so uh, uh, so uh, yeah, this is about the root 
rootfs, we use uh, dmvrt. Um, Ah, yeah, so uh, the note is uh, uh, here. Uh, uh, so the boot process is uh, uh, the unified kernel comes first, but during build stage, uh, you need to first generate uh, the root FS um, uh, with Verity device, and uh, it generates the hash value, and you need to include that hash value inside kernel command line parameters because kernel command lines are embedded in uh, unified kernel. So first we need to generate rootfs with verity and then include the hash value in the uh, unified kernel and then sign the unified kernel. So that is a sequence in the build process. Oh, yeah. So that is all from the secure boot uh, respect to. So this is how uh, secure boot is uh, verified uh, in all the boot stages. Um, so, uh, so next, uh, it's uh, about software updates. Uh, so, yeah, uh, why we need these software updates? Uh, because we need to upgrade the device with advanced features and some get some performance and security fixes. Uh, also, it provides it, it should provide uh, authenticity and integrity as part of security feature we are talking about. So, uh, uh, I have limited slides about software update. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, so in CIP, uh, uh, we use software update uh, by uh, as Babic, uh, uh, open source tool. Uh, so it use it has many approaches how a software update can be happen. Okay, we use the double copy approach uh, because that is uh, uh, straightforward. We need uh, uh, two partitions for this and uh, to update, uh, uh, so one will act as uh, 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 role, uh, for backup and the main one is the actual root, uh, root FS partition booted. Um, yeah, so uh, it uh, this software update uh, also supports via OTA or over the air, uh, or uh, it uses also local storage. Um, it supports signed software updates. It also supports signed uh, uh, software updates. Uh, let's talk about in the next slide. So uh, this is how uh, the dual copy mechanism uh, works in uh, CIP. So uh, so the uh, uh, the two colors, green and yellow, uh, two partitions. It, uh, those are dual copies, so the both are of same. Uh, so on uh, on Alive, it, it chooses only one, uh, one uh, partition or one sequence. Um, so it boots the boot partition A and mounts the root, for root file system A. Um, when a software update trigger, it will update the other partitions and then uh, it reboots uh, and, uh, and it updates actually uh, after software update is successful uh, in the root file system or in the live system. So it uh, uses uh, uh, bootloader variables to update the status of uh, 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 the software update. Uh, is happened or not? Uh, um, so it it changes the uh, 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 boot partition when th in the next boot. Uh, so uh, here is watchdog is used. So uh, when uh, the boot partition, yeah. uh, so the boot partition uh, B. Uh, uh, if if there is any failure, it 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 has rollback mechanism. It 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 
triggers, uh, watchdog triggers in a period of time. Uh, it rolls back to the previous partition if any failure. So this is about the software update. So it is th this talk has already happened in the previous uh, previous uh, sessions. Uh, 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 you can see the reference. Uh, you can find the more details in, this, in those uh, previous sessions. Uh, so uh, this is uh, assigned um, or updates. So uh, here, uh, when we create software update image or, or the do diff image, so we create uh, the sub image, and the description file is used for uh, defining what what is the image, what is the type, and what partitions, and uh, also it includes the um, uh, root hash value of the sub image so that uh, it, it helps to verify the integrity. Uh, and then uh, it, it, it combines uh, and uh, uh, creates a, uh, or assigns this software update description file um, to create authenticity, uh, to authenticity, authenticity check. So it, it combines this and creates a SW file. And this SW file is used for uh, to software update, uh, either OTA, so you can use Hawkbeat uh, uh, or uh, local update. So uh, when software update is uh, uh, received in the uh, device and it, it checks the, it opens the uh, SW file and checks the signature first and then also uh, once signature is passed, authenticity is passed, then it reads the hash value from software update description file and checks the integrity of the uh, software update image. Then it proceeds for software update. Yeah, uh, this is the how signed software updates proceeds. Oh, I think I'll hand over to Dinesh. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Venkat. So uh, I will just uh, have some updates uh, from uh, IEC perspective what we have been uh, recently doing. So uh, we have basically completed uh, the activity of investigating uh, FODES 1 and FODES 2. And we also completed gap assessment with certification body. And after that, there were uh, quite a few uh, action items uh, in CIP to complete. So after uh, uh, like starting the work on those things, uh, we realized like uh, there is a lot of uh, queries from CIP side and there were a lot of uh, back and forth in terms of queries with certification body. So now, uh, like we have completed uh, many action items, but still there are uh, quite a few. And uh, that is why now we are proceeding to engage with certification body for final certification. And uh, most likely we are going to make a, a decision on this by end of uh, this month or early next month and we will be entering into final certification phase uh, for CIP. So uh, because of limited time, I will uh, skip few slides. So as part of CIP security work group activities, we have added multiple security packages in IC layer, as well as we have created uh, several documents to meet IC requirements. And I will skip this slide. Uh, then this is the detail about the IEC layer, which has been added in ESR CAP core uh, project. So this can be used uh, to uh, basically meet IEC 62442-2 requirements. And uh, uh, for this, separate tests have been added. And soon we are going to uh, execute those tests regularly. And the test cells will be available uh, for anyone to uh, check the details of those uh, tests. Uh, then this is the detail about the IEC documents repository. And recently, we have also added several other documents uh, since my last session uh, based on the gap assessment gaps. So because of being open source, there are still uh, several gaps. And we are trying to reuse most of the Debian practices and processes in CIP. And uh, there are quite a few challenges from open source perspective, because in open source, open source we don't have very, uh, uh, very good defined processes in place. So we have to uh, work basically in terms of uh, fixing those gaps, uh, so that we can strengthen the uh, security of open source components. 
yeah so i will skip this slide as well so yeah there are certain benefits once ic becomes 6243 compliance uh, it will be uh, like uh, quite helpful to reduce the overall certification effort uh, for cip users as well as uh, uh, there will be a lot of documentation and uh, additional packages available from CIP to uh, reuse by CIP users. So this is the uh, long list of CIP supported reference hardware and it is uh, of course growing and uh, uh, we are also planning to select some of the reference hardware from this list and this will be chosen for IEC certification. So that discussion is currently in progress within CIP members. So uh, here in uh, OSS Japan, we have a CIP booth. So uh, I would request uh, participants to please uh, visit CIP booth and uh, watch live demo, uh, which is uh, uh, basically running CIP kernel uh, for some of the huge cases. So CIP is supported by uh, uh, community. You can see the current CIP members, and this list is, uh, of course, growing. And then we have some references and details. So that's all. Thanks. Thank you. So this is very interesting. Um, Thank you. Can you uh, talk a little bit about the threat model that you have for software updates? Because from what I can see, it looks like all it's doing is checking to see there's a signature. It doesn't seem to be concerned if the keys are stolen or the repository is compromised or other problems like that occur, which I'm a little surprised to see because a lot of other modern updaters in this space address those issues. Hmm. Yeah, thanks. So the question is to uh, how threat modeling is done in CIP and how the issues related to uh, keeping the keys secure is being addressed. So uh, in as part of threat modeling in CIP, basically we considered how the data flow happens between CIP uh, developer systems as well as upstream repositories. Now coming to the question of how are we making sure the security of uh, keys. So because CIP being a reference platform, uh, so far, we have not cared much about storing keys because we are just verifying those uh, reference uh, images and discarding keys. Now, as we are entering into IEC certification phase, we are now working to identify uh, reference hardware, which is going to have a secure storage, and then uh, we care about those keys and uh, make them secure. And uh, then, accordingly, our threat model also will be updated to include those scenarios. So the detailed threat model is available in our CIP documentation. You can have a look on that. OK, so I think what I understand from your answer is that it's not handled now, but you want to handle it in the future? Yes. OK, all right. Yeah, I, I, I know people from the security side who would be, be very interested in collaborating with you to help to add that. Sure, so. that will be quite interesting. Thanks. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.